Hey everyone, I'm Ian Norman from Lonely Spec, and as part of my review of the Sony A7S, I want to show you how its high ISO capability can help us photograph the Milky Way. In order to make this review of the A7S, we traveled out to Trona Pinnacles National Landmark in California. Its 200 foot tall rock formations and relatively dark skies make it one of my favorite spots for astrophotography. For the review, I used the A7S mounted with a Voigtlander 50mm f1.1 lens, which is almost one stop faster than most other 50mm lenses, and that should help us gather lots of light for this demonstration. Once it got dark, I set the A7S up on a tripod and pointed it at the constellations Sagittarius and Scorpius, right near the Milky Way's galactic center. In this shot, the A7S is shooting at 24 frames per second with a lens set wide open at f1.1, a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second, and an ISO of 51,200. I chose these initial settings to try and mimic what I could see with my own eyes. You can just start to see some detail in the Milky Way Galactic Center, but everything's still pretty dark. So let's bump up the ISO and see how well the A7S can see in the dark. It was a relatively warm night, so at ISO 102,400, we can see a little bit of amplifier glow on the left side of the frame, but we can also start to make out some of the dark dust lanes in the Milky Way and really start to see the structure in the galactic center. And here's ISO 204,800, which has more fine detail in the galactic center. And finally, at ISO 409,600, fainter stars are much more visible, but noise levels start to look pretty awful. Now, shooting at ISO 400,000 is definitely going to be way too grainy for any high quality photos or video, but there's some real practicality for astrophotographers because it makes it a lot easier to set up the photograph. With pretty much any other camera that I've used, focusing at night is usually a lot more difficult. On the A7S, it's much easier to focus and frame the shot because you can really see what's going on in the dark. I think this capability is the one thing that really sets the A7S apart from any other camera that I've used for astrophotography. Being able to see in nearly pitch black conditions with the A7S, I was even able to shoot hyperlapse footage of the Trona Pinnacles. Overall, I had a really great time using the A7S. It's probably the easiest camera for astrophotography that I've tried yet because of its high sensitivity and the fact that you can see in such dark conditions. It's possible to capture relatively clean images of the Milky Way even with slow lenses and ISOs as high as 51,200. I had no hesitation stopping down to f4 and shooting at ISO 12,800 throughout the course of the night. So paired with even a moderately fast lens, the A7S can shoot really clean stills and time lapses of the night sky. I really hope you enjoyed this quick review. If you want to see more astrophotography and photography videos, please subscribe and check out the full review of the Sony A7S on LonelySpec.com. See ya!